Okay. That's all I wanted. This is your last show. Get it down. Okay. 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 Uh, actually, I made two scars. I made the pink one for like a Princess Daisy. I swear if I got that wrong, everybody's gonna murder me. And a Mario themed one. Um, I personally like the Mario themed one. I made my grandma wear it. My, my camera keeps dying. But if you want to learn how to make these, please stay tuned and keep watching. Lay out your fleece lengthwise. Then pin pattern piece one on one side of the fleece closest to the top as you can possibly get it. Then fold the fleece lengthwise again on the other side, making it double and allowing the salvage edge to just meet the first pattern piece you pin down. Pin down pattern pieces number two and number 16 if you're working on scarf D. If you're not working on scarf D, don't worry about 16. But you want to pin pattern piece number two and then cut out both of those so that you have two, two of the same pattern. Cut the scarf pattern piece to the fold line on the pattern. It should actually say, there should be a thick line that says fold line. You want to cut up to there and then flip the pattern piece over that line. So you want to pin it along that line so that you can be able to flip it and then pin it on the other side of the fabric and then cut that out. So when you cut it out, you have one long piece of fleece. Take your number two pattern piece, pinning it print side up to the lining fabric, which has been folded in half with right sides together. Cut that out and you should have two halves of a hood lining. With right sides together, stitch center back seam of hood sections. Fleece is the kind of fabric you don't want to make a mistake with. It can be difficult to remove those threads once you have them sewn together. So you want to make as little mistakes as possible. Sew your fleece with a zigzag stitch on the seams to allow it room to stretch but don't pull on your fabric as you feed it through your machine. Your hood should look something like this. Sew down the back seam of your hood lining in the same manner, making sure your right sides are together. For the peak for Scarf D, you should have pattern piece 16 cut out of fusible webbing, lining, and fleece. To apply the interfacing, place the interfacing glue side up and the lining wrong side down on top of that interfacing. Place a damp drop cloth on top and press with a hot iron until they are completely stuck together. Allow time to cool. With right sides together, pin lining to peak having raw edges even. Stitch the curved edge, trim the seam, and clip the curves being careful not to cut through the stitching. Turn peak right side out and press with your iron. Baste raw edges together. Then top stitch 3 eighths of an inch from the curved edge. On outside, pin the peak to the front edge of the hood, matching small dot markings from pattern. Machine baste the edge. With the hood wrong side out, Flip the peak inside. With the lining right side out, pin it to the inside of the hood over the peak and stitch. The same thing goes for the hood on hoodie C, just without the peak, so you don't have to worry about it. Just make sure that when you're sewing, you don't catch the hood or the peak in your stitching. And your hood should look something like this. Flip them inside. Base stitch the raw edges together, matching the seams. With right sides together, pin hood to scarf matching large dots and center back seam. Stitch and trim the seam between the large dots. Fold scarf in half lengthwise with right side together, sandwiching the hood. Stitch the raw edges, leaving an opening 
on back neck wide enough to turn and being careful not to catch in free edges of hood. Trim your corners. Turn your scarf right side out. On the inside of the hood, you should still have an opening. With that opening, you want to press that edge under around 5 eighths of an inch with an iron, but not too hot. On inside, you want to slip stitch the pressed edge and lower edge of lining, making sure you catch the lining as close to the seam as possible as to not cause too much tension in the lining. Even though this is not part of the instruction, I feel like it's optional because I couldn't get the top stitch to look pre presentable on both sides, so I didn't do step 14. Alrighty, and from here we add the appliques. I actually have a full video on how to make these, which I will link below for you. Pin your suspender so that the centers match along the shoulder of your scarf. It must be one and one fourth inch above the edge of your scarf. I fuse one side of the suspender at the buckle and then the other side and then I ironed across the entire thing. For the star, place or pin your star centered over the seam at 5 eighths of an inch from the lower edge. Place a damp drop cloth and fuse with your iron. For scarf C, place or pin the crown to the front edge of hood, centering crown over center seam and placing lower edge 5 eighths of an inch above finished edge. Fuse in place with a damp cloth and iron on setting 3, pressing 3-5 three to five seconds between movements. Apply fabric glue to the small dots that you transferred from your pattern. Then place your jewels and allow them to dry for at least one hour. Put the question mark on the right end of your scarf. Fuse your larger piece two and a half inches above the lower edge. Take the smaller piece and fuse about one fourth inch to one and a half inch, whichever looks best to your eye, below the large piece. For the flower, place down and fuse the stem on the left end of the scarf at two and three fourths inch above the lower edge. Pin or place your flower face at the guideline we made from the pattern and fuse with your damp drop cloth and iron. Thank you guys so much. Like I said, if you, if, like I said, I don't know if you want me to tell you how much you need or if I write it down below. It might be a lot easier if I just write it down below. Um, anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed this and I look forward to seeing your cute creations. And if you have any questions, comments, concerns, or cr cr blah, 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 constructive criticism. If you have any constru constructive criticism, please leave it down below on how I can improve. And hopefully within like the next couple months, I'll be a lot better and constantly updating. I appreciate your opinions and I appreciate you crafting with me. So I'll see you guys next time. Bye.